Well, here we are in December, which naturally means more outboards are coming in than are going out. And storage is becoming a little bit of a problem here. The first thought to solve this would be outboard engine stand. Everybody's seen them. You search DIY outboard stand. That's one of the major ones that come up. Everybody make them. Uh, they're useful. They hold a lot of weight. And it's not really a bad stand. Uh, however, they aren't cheap to make. If you're not using recycled lumber, this one was recycled lumber from some play thing we made for the baby. Anyway, you need like six 2x4s and preferably a 2x6 for the top here. Uh, you also need a bucket of screws and then you're going to need casters as well. What I do to get casters is Harbor Freight when they're having a sale on their furniture dollies. I buy the furniture dolly and take the casters off because that way it's 10 bucks instead of like 7 bucks for each caster. It's a pretty, pretty good little hack there actually. However, given our current lumber prices, this is one expensive stand to make right now if you need to buy everything. And let's not forget a box of screws is 8 bucks. Well, actually, it's like eight ninety nine. So let's figure, you know, after tax, it's, I don't know what tax is, like nine fifty probably for that box of screws. So you're, you're into this thing, nearly 50 bucks when everything's said and done. It's kind of a lot, especially when you need, you know, a dozen of them. Um, and they're just not that attractive. You know, they're really nothing to it, just basic. Now this stand, on the other hand, that's the stand I personally like the best. It's a dealer display stand. I, ideally, I would have a whole bunch of these things. Problem is, they're expensive, and good luck finding one. So I'm going to take some measurements, and then go pick up some lumber. So, I think it's AB, AC, plywood, 4x8. The saws all, and trim it down to manageable size pieces. All right, I use the saws all and kind of trim it down to size. Basically, I cut it in half to four feet and then cut it to four feet and a half, and I'm left with a two by four sheet of three quarter ply. So, we're on a roll. All right, here's my design ready to go on the CNC machine. Now, obviously, you don't need a CNC machine. I mean, suppose you could do this with a, uh, a jigsaw or a bandsaw or pretty much anything you have, really. I mean, you can go with a coping saw if you wanted to. All right, due to popular demand, I have picked up a different audio recording device, which is actually still my cell phone just now with an external microphone. So hopefully this will work better. Uh, machine's all programmed, ready to go. Uh, Workpiece hold down is secured via screws. Theory, we're ready to go. Um, got my ear protection, I'm gonna put that on and we'll see how this goes. I gotta make another one. The uh, second piece is just cut out. I'm gonna unscrew it and take it from there. Two bases, two heads. Uh, I have six of these, but I only need five, so there's that. Um, I have a bottle of Type Bond 2 here. As you can see, it's water resistant, interior and exterior use. However, in this bottle, there is Type Bond 3, which is waterproof glue. So I'm gonna glue the two halves of everything together, and uh, yeah, no reason to show that by the way, just glue drying, kind of boring. So I'll clamp them all together, well I'll glue it, clamp it, and then we'll assemble. Well, the main base is glued up and dried, so take it off and I'll glue up all the other pieces now. Okay, the parts are all dry, ready to be assembled. Now, just so you know, originally I planned on making the upright support for the actual stand out of this uh, piece of angle aluminum I have. The plan was to get the dimension of the thickness exactly and then route out the groove on all the parts to accept that. Now, while measuring that out is when I discovered that I have this. This is the aluminum pipe that I have left over from the uh, bimini top I built. And it's a pretty heavy wall, so it should work better. Makes a 
makes everything a lot easier as far as assembly too. So it's a 7 8 outside diameter. So I'm going to put, you know, each one will go about here. It'll match into here. This will get attached onto the base somewhere, also with the matching holes. And you see those dimensions are about the same. Five of these is about, you know, a little less than four inches. So that is basically going to be the stand. So I'm going to drill some holes, try to keep them as straight as I possibly can, and glue it and assemble it. All right, with my base glued up, I can drill some holes. I'm going to use the 7 8 Forstner bit for this. I made the middle here minus 3 quarters of an inch. Theory is when my pole goes in here, it's going to have some backward pressure. So I don't want to put it all the way on the edge because it might blow this out too much. So I moved it in 3 quarters of an inch. I'm sure more would probably be better, but I think here it's going to be fine too. If you think about it on the top, it's going to want to lean that way as well, which is why that shaped the way it is. So all the pressure backwards, there's more of a literal and figurative footprint here to keep it from rocking backwards. And then this, it's going to be you know an inch when it's done, of the solid plywood forcing outward. It shouldn't really break, but we'll see how it goes. So this is the jig I'm using to drill my holes. So I'm going to use the Forstner bit, put it in the drill press, run it down like so, get it started, pull it out. I have a little piece of pipe that I will then hammer in there to lock it down. I'll center this up on my line and drill the next one. Should be, should be pretty easy. All right, before I drill, I don't want to go run the pipe all the way through the bottom. So I'm going to set up the drill stop to just touch it. So right there, don't want to go any more than that. I know you can't see it, but there's a little wheel on the adjustment arm here. I don't know what it's called, it's called an adjustment arm. That controls how deep it can go. I'll zoom up, see it? So you turn these and you can stop the depth. So that's how I plan on doing that. So let's put a uh, hole in it. Hold it up the best I can. Just gotta check one thing. Start our final assembly. So for the intended engine, I need 27 inches from the top of this to this base. So 27 minus the thickness of this, 9 inches. This one's 5.559. Excuse me. This one's 5.55 inches deep. This one's 5.59 inches deep. So it's, it's really close. So let's call it, I don't know, five and a half inches. Just because. So plus 5.5. That would be 23.5 inches is what we need for our poles. So we'll get that cut now. All right, as it turns out, those pipes through these holes is a really, really tight fit. I could hammer them and probably go, but I don't want to do that. So I'm sanding inside of these holes. If that doesn't work, it probably wax up the uh, holes themselves. One of my concerns I had is these two poles not being perfectly parallel, and that's exactly what's happening. Um, my hole is probably just a hair off, and you know, two feet away, it's quarter inch. I don't know. Either way, the poles are basically going like that. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. I'm still going to glue it together. Still got to see if this thing's going to work. Right over 
for night, which it probably didn't need. Probably could have done it in a couple hours. And would have been fine. You anyway, sanded the holes here. So, in theory. Yeah, put it on. Now, like I said, my holes aren't perfectly straight, so this thing is just a little bit tilted. But we can Say. And you can't really tell the tent or not aligned, at least not so far. So we'll see how this works. Let's uh, let's go try it out. Well, will you look at that? That thing's holding it just fine. All right, so. Eight pounds isn't really an issue for it, so that's good. So let's uh, start working our way up with it. And as you can see, there's absolutely no issue holding up a six horsepower. Uh, let's work our way up a little bit, shall we? Here it is holding up a 9.5. 9.5, no issue either. this old 10 horse there's no issue holding it up either um, I probably wouldn't go as high as a 20 horse although I do think the stand would probably hold it just fine it's just a 20 horse they start getting into big heavy engines at that point so I would say this is ideal for smaller motors let's say up to a, a 15 horsepower now let's say you... your hobby is buying and fixing and selling outboards on the old Craigslist which a lot of people do I mean, you're not going to get rich at it, but it's a, it's a fun little hobby. Now, which one of these stands do you think would be better for your initial photo? To me, this one says pro, this one says amateur. So it does have that going for it. In my opinion, anyway, this looks 10 times better than this old thing. And like I've been saying from the beginning, cost. This thing is like 50 bucks. This is like 15. Now, this also has the added benefit of being able to be taken apart for easy transport. So if you go to one of those AOMCI Motor Club uh, swap meet show things, you know, you could take, a, take this apart, stack up, you could probably get 10 of them in the trunk of a Roadmaster. That one? Yeah, not going to happen. So, nice little added benefit. So I think I'm going to make up a couple more of these stands, just for my, obviously it's my smaller motors. So, do you like it or hate it? If you hate it, please let me know in the comments below. It feeds the engagement. Okay, version two of the stand, as you can see, is already underway. Parts are already cut out. There is a slight change, though. Instead of trying to get fancy doing one of these, I'm just going to stack these blocks like so. Uh, easier to glue, easier to drill, easier to assemble, so it's probably just a better idea. And you're not trying to glue an end grain here. You're, you know, you have some better services to glue. And you can screw all those together if you want. So, we'll see how it goes. The other change, um, I'm not going to use the Forstner bit or even the spade bit. Now, the spade bit did work. It left a rough hole and I had to sand it quite a lot. Um, it does go deeper and that's why I had to use it. I think I am going to get a long 7 8 drill bit. Assemble the whole thing and just drill the two holes without screwing around with the depths and bit changes and stuff. Overall, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I'm pleased it does exactly what I wanted to, and it, I think it looks a little better. Now, the advantage is obviously cost. Now, the disadvantage is assembly difficulty. I use a CNC machine. Not everybody's going to have that. You know, you, most people are probably going to make it using a jigsaw, which is perfectly fine. If you're good at the jigsaw, you can get some really, really nice results as well. Uh, the problem, though, is drilling that long of a hole. It needs to be straight, and if you don't have a large drill press capable of getting a, a bit in there and then have that kind of a reach on it. Do you want to make one? If so, here are the plans. Now, it actually is pretty easy to get it onto a piece of plywood. So, just for full disclosure, to get this out of this, I actually shortened it a little bit. Instead of going 24 inches total length, I went 23. 
And instead of going 21 and a half wide, since I didn't want to deal with the half, I went 20. Um, I believe here also, instead of 10 and a half, I went 10. I think those are the only changes I made to able to get this out of a two by two piece of ply. So I'm not gonna go into that now. I'm just gonna show you how an easy way I think to draw it out onto the uh, lumber here. And all we should need is a square and a sharp. So I'm gonna cut everything in half. So 21 and a half would be what, 10 and three quarters? So 10 and three quarters. 24 is obviously 12. 10 and a half would be five and a quarter. And six, three, four is two, and you don't need to do all that. If you notice here, it's 24 long, but the middle section is 12, right? So if we subtract this, then we have 12 left over, or six inches on each side here. That's gonna be important. So let's get our square out here. The whole thing is 24 inches wide. So I'm gonna make a mark down here on the 12. That'll show us the middle. Now, the middle is six inches wide, so let's go three inches on each side. I'll put a mark there and a mark here. I'll come, the little foot here is two inches. So I'll put a mark on two inches on both ends. middle it's six inches so I'll put a mark on six and then from the top I'll go down six inches six inches so that's the start of it now I actually probably should have done this a little bit differently instead of the mark I'll go a little wide that way for me all right So I need to draw a line here down the middle, keep it straight. Now, like I said, it's six inches wide. So go there to there. We'll put a point in three inches, three inches. And then we can connect the dots. Got to do the same thing for the top. Now, same principle applies to do the top. You can take the ten and a half, mark it in half there. So go five and a quarter on each side, draw a line in the center, two inches on each side, six inches down, and then you can connect those without needing to figure out the angles. Now, obviously, any dimension here can be changed. So if you wanted to put casters or something, you could make this a little thicker. If you're putting a larger outboard, you can make the whole thing bigger. You're, you know, the sky's the limit of the options. Now, I also radiused all my inside corners. So right here, there's a little radius. You can do that too if you wanted. Pretty easy. Just kind of get a cup or whatever size you want to do. And you can use that to trace your round. We do that in each corner. Now that that's obviously just for design. It's not going to make it any stronger or anything, I don't think. But you know, you could do the same thing for the outside if you wanted to round it outside corners. Put the cup there, go like that. And you could have rounded ends. You know. All kinds of different options you could do. But anyway, that's the that's the base of it. You can now hit it with your jigsaw, cut it out, do that twice, glue it together, make the head, which you should have enough lumber here to do. Figure out your own little base platform, get some pipe, and you have a stand. Let me know if you're gonna build one too. Kind of curious if other people are gonna like this.